Hey, what's up, you guys? It's me, Odeo, aka The Overview. The year has come to an end, and as for ceremonially, I feel like I should end this with the top 10 list, at least. And I'm well aware I haven't reviewed any movies this year, but I have seen them. And it's funny because this is the one year I feel like every movie I expected to be good didn't turn out the way I expected. And there were some real unknown surprises on my list that I didn't actually think were going to make the top of my list. There's been a couple delays, but still, we're going to get a lot of them in 2023. All right, guys, as for right now, this is the top 10 best list of 2022, subjectively, because they're not, they might not be the best for some people, but these were the best to me. Now, let's get started with number 10. Kicking it off with number 10 on my list, Clerks 3, because, come on, I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. I loved him since the early 2000s, and I feel like now that he's coming to his own, he actually made a, a sequel that is capable of being on its own. Finishing off the Clerks or the New Jersey trilogy, I can say, because I know he has a lot more films coming about this universe, but who cares? They did it perfectly, and it re really got me at the end. Number nine. All right, number nine on my list, Jackass Forever, because is this the one comedy this year you haven't stopped laughing at? I love the Jackass crew. I can say I'm surprised that we got to see a lot of the action in this movie literally and figuratively but um i can't wait to say it. i was so happy in this movie i was dying at the beginning and at least one <laughs> one joke in, one prank in the middle i wouldn't even say a prank that's more of a eh, sensitive topic for some of us but anyway i'm excited to see what happens next i know they're coming up with a jackass tv show if they could try to make it at least like a movie bring some of the old guest stars bring in some new actors as jackasses i can't wait to see what's going to happen next for the jackass franchise Number eight. When you make an original horror movie, you gotta have class with it. You know it's independent, a lot of people aren't gonna see it, but who knows if it's gonna make a lot of rounds on Netflix, so end up the second one being as good, not even good, I could just say better than the first one. Terrifier 2 was a movie I didn't expect to be good. I expected it to be scary and a eh, guilty pleasure because I know some of the actors in the first movie, first movie were just you can tell they did not know how to act, but they kind of did improve it with this one. Not only that, but including some new lore for Arthur Clown, some gory, bloody kills, which I am demented to say that I laughed so hard at one that I shouldn't even be laughing that hard at. But anyway, I'm excited for what they might do for Terrify 3. Don't know if it's going to take us long because they already started doing a lot of processing for the third one. Yet, I can't wait to see what happens next. Number 7. It's almost a Halloween curse at this point where every movie that is being rebooted or sequelized is going to end up coming with a new installment in 2022. We got three of them, but only one of the few was best, Scream, or as we all are going to call it at this point, Scream 5. It did something I did not expect to do. We lost Wes Craven. The TV show on MTV, it was fine enough, even though they didn't use the Ghostface match for the third season. But until you tell me they're actually doing another Scream movie with the creators of Ready or Not and everything in this film turned out to be as honorable as Wes Craven could have made it, putting in reboot will reboot, or it's, it's, it's either reboot will or a requel type of aspect to the movie where continuing off what the last one ended off with, I cannot wait to see what they're gonna do for Scream 6. It's coming in three months, you already know I'm gonna go see it, but I wonder what is gonna be the next thing? That's still my thought. What is gonna be the next horror genre or movie aspect thing they're gonna try to do for the next one? Depending on what it is, there's no way they could try to make this trilogy the, as good as the original three. Number six. Weird. Yeah, and I'm like that. Weird, the L. Yankovic story is a biopic, which, hear the story within itself. It's a Ruku exclusive movie. No theater release, looks cheap. Yeah, Daniel Radcliffe is Weird Al, which, that's not a bad choice if you think about it. But the movie in itself is basically a self parody version of L. Yankovic story with basically almost every biographical um, movie or TV show, whichever, mix into one, knowing it's a joke. And you got me in because this is one of those movies where it came out of nowhere. I knew about it, but the more I watched it, I'm like, wait a minute, is this even true? Is this a parody on the, oh, okay. I get what he's doing here. I can say this is one of the most cleverest movies I've seen this year. Number five. All right, guys, the final four. What's it going to be? This one, I was surprised to actually have gone and seen it because I wasn't born around the 1970s and I could have sworn there was a lot more weirder stuff playing in the movie theaters like X. If this was an actual horror 
porn movie because I can say about Andrew 24 is that most of the films are creative enough to where I'm like, oh, this is nice. Uh, what are you doing? Wait, what? And it got you confused till the very end of the movie. It, they've been killing it these past couple of years, but I can say that X is basically a brought, uh, how can I say this? It's more of a return to form for the slasher genre. Because, yeah, we got Scream early on in the year, and they kind of make poke fun at the A24 horror-inspired movies. But I can say that for A24 now, horror now, I can't wait to see what's going what's to happen next. X is one of the surprises of this year. If you haven't seen it, go watch it now. I don't care if it's like a old parody-ish inspired movie. But I can say, amazing. Throw back the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I can say... I'm excited for the third one. Itch if it ever comes out this year. Not, not, I don't even know or not. Number four. So lately Marvel's been blowing it, except until the last quarter of the year. But you can't tell me the best superhero movie of this year wasn't The Batman. Okay, as I said before time and time again, I wasn't fond of Robert Pattinson's choice as Batman. I wasn't fond that it was in a separate universe because I wanted to see what's going to happen with the DCEU, which... Gone. And now that you're telling me that this new up-and-coming Batman would be one of my favorites, if not one of the best movies of this year, count me in. The Riddler wasn't in it as much, but he still, you felt his shadow that the movie. Um, Zoe Kravitz as Selina was amazing. But I kind of want to know where can they go farther than this universe, because we know there's going to be a lot of TV shows, movies setting up what's going to happen next in this certain separate Batman universe. But I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. And the next movie we're going to get to see is Bruce Wayne. That's the only thing. If one flaw I could say about the Batman is that we never got to see his Bruce Wayne. We got to see his version of the Batman. But I can't wait to see what his version of Bruce Wayne is. And I know further sequels can expand on it. And I know Vengeance is coming. Number three. Okay, now these top three, these are the movies I felt like they all could have been number one. Because Marvel movie, Pixar movie, DC movie... I've been excited for those, but I can't wait to say that for once this year, all of my movies were basically like, this could be number one. This is my favorite. flip flopping back and forth with number three on my list being our latest entry, Avatar The Way of Water. I, if I'm being honest, and I never said this to anyone, I've never seen Avatar in my life. I've never seen it since 2009. The only Avatar I knew was The Last Airbender. And... Two weeks ago, I was ready, getting ready to watch Avatar because I'm like, The Way of Water still is coming out and I haven't seen it. Okay, I'll watch it. I know some of the memorable parts, but we'll see. And as I'm re-watching the first one, I'm like, oh, this is not what I remember. Wait a minute, what's this? And I learned new stuff, especially going into the second one. And I can say this movie, visually, it's amazing. I saw it in IMAX 3D, the expanded ratio. It looked so good. The plot was okay because... It's still, you see a little in reruns of the first movie with knowing that early 2009 the script must have been written and you know the technology wasn't able to film the technology with the way they had it with the first one. And it looks amazing. I don't know where they're going to go farther from here. I hear he has like three more sequels planned, up to seven. I don't know what's going to happen that's going to make him expand on it. But I know James Cameron has to be proud of his achievement. Made a billion dollars in less than two weeks. And I know for sure that if they say this movie didn't make profit, it did make profit as much as the first one. Number two. All right, number two, Everything Everywhere All at Once. A small little independent A24 film, which I can't even describe the way this movie is to you because I saw this movie with limited marketing. The only thing I knew about it was the little eye, um, you know the little eye toy thing we used to glue on paper sticks as a kid? I just saw that, and I'm like, what is this movie about? And I hear Michelle Yeoh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Short Round is in this movie. I'm like, wait a minute, oh, that's kind of cool. And then I watch the movie, I'm like, oh, so this is a better multiverse movie than the one we actually were supposed to get this year. I didn't expect that, especially the way I see that concept. I wish they could try to do it at least in an action movie. Like an action movie, action movie, not like this one, because this was more inspired by Kung Fu ish inspired Jackie Chan ish type movies Bruce Lee I can put in there at least but it's the best science fiction movie I think I've seen this year I wish they could try to do this concept in something else because I feel like there's a lot more they can do with that multiverse angle number one all right number one on my list and hmm there's no way I could say it except this 
Highway to the Danger Zone. Top Gun Maverick. Out of all the movies this year, there has not been a film I've been like, I want to go see that again because I usually see like Marvel, DC, Star Wars ish movies twice. But this one said, nah, I actually got to see it. A throwback to the classic blockbuster. Something I can say I've never seen in a movie go on this year besides being a huge CGI expanded blockbuster Marvel movie. But I can say this Top Gun Maverick was so good. Tom Cruise, he can retire now at this point because every other stunt he's going to do later on, as in Mission Impossible inspired films, that's going to kill him because if he doesn't join the fact that he was basically the number one highest lasting movie up till December in theaters, you cannot tell me that's not a success. I love this movie. I'm still working on my Top Gun-ish body. I'm still waiting for that little moment. I'm going to give it till May. I promise you. And I guess that's it. That's my top 10 list for this year. I know we're going into 2023 with new expectations. I know there's a lot of things that are coming out next year and I want to work on it with this channel and I want to be better because I feel like I got this in the I got this in the bag now and I know what I want to do next in life. All right guys, this is the overview. Make sure to like and subscribe. I haven't said that in a minute, which is weird. And I'll see you in the next video or should I say the fun list. Bye.